Okay, the last chapter we'll be talking about is going to be about Bat Lapan, Membina Kemakmuran Negara. So, we'll talk about how Malaysia is going to use its economy to develop the country. The first one is going to be about DB. It's going to be about DPN. But in our syllabus, we're only going to be talking about DB and what, it, and what is done in DB. So, what is DB? DB or Dasa Ekonomi Baru was done from 1971 to 1990 for, for 20 years. And it is done through the first long-term Malaysian plan, RRJP1. And it involves four of these um, five-year plans. Remember the Rancangan Pembangunan Imatau Malaysia? It involves five. Rancangan Malaysia Kedua, Rancangan Malaysia Ketiga, Rancangan Malaysia Keempat, and Rancangan Malaysia Kelima. So, from the second Malaysia plan to the fifth Malaysia plan. And it is done by MAPEN. Remember I talked about MAPEN late, uh, before this? They are the ones who set the outline for trying to Negara um, Kengkelis Panduan for people to work together and also to uh, pro um, promote this integration, integration national. So it is to um, it is to what uh, um, uh, to uh, promote um, this national identity among the people. So there are a few professionals in DB. And there, you can see that there are people from Norway and Britain. I forgot why already. It's something to do with, um, to get other people's point of view, if I'm not wrong. So, what is, what is DB's uh, goals? So, DB has two main goals. Memasmi kemiskinan and menyusun semula masyarakat. Memasmi kemiskinan means um, they want to get rid of poverty. And menyusun semula masyarakat is to rearrange how the structure of the community is. Because back then, uh, during British, there is a China, uh, Chinese people for... Uh, uh, business and then um, and then there's also Malays for pertanian and so on so they want to get rid of this so um, yeah and then uh, they also want to get rid of this social economic issues there are four main social economic issues like to to, to uh, close the gap between number one uh, Bumi and non Bumi number two East Coast and West Coast number three between countries like Sabah, Sarawak and other countries and um Number four, between Desa and Bandar, uh, between um, like villages and cities, rural and ur urban. So what it, so how did they do DB? Like what, what, what are the things that they do in DB? Number one is they try to increase the quality of life, meaning meningkatkan taraf hidup masyarakat. So how do they do this? Uh, there are two focuses. One is in um, cities and one is in the villages. Oh, at the balik it. So how, so how, in rural, how do they do this in rural areas? Kawasan luar bandar. Number one is they try to... Um, Developed through kegiatan gerakan koperasi. So uh, this 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 gerakan koperasi, this movement is to um, is to teach people how to I think it was to make businesses uh, if I'm not wrong. It's like to teach people how to do businesses, and um, they also did a few programs. So number one is um, uh, penerokaan tanah baharu to to uh, to build new foundations of ground, uh, land, uh, help with uh, providing. This this uh, new technology for uh, for planting, uh, subsidy beni and baja. It's for seeds and uh, fertilizer. So like so like they give fertilizer and seeds for people to plant, and then they also give like um uh, um advice on work. And then um there's also not only are there poor people in rural areas, there are also poor people in urban areas because of because they have low um. Uh, low income. So how do they increase the income? Number one is they try to get people more in, involved in, in, the, in the industry so they can increase more jobs, so they can get more jobs. And they also want to um, improve the quality of life by um, so that like the poor people can still afford to go to these stuff, uh, to, to, to access these stuff like schools, uh, roads, uh, water, electric, scholarships, etc. Next is Rancangan Buku Hijau. So Rancangan Buku Hijau was done by Tun Abdul Razak. And uh, its main point was to increase the income of the people and to make sure that people get enough uh, food. Uh, it is mainly focused for, um, to, for the full utilization of soil, of land. So, how, so what do they do with the land uh, through Buku Hijau? Number one is they have these short-term plantations and then they have these um, grouped up, um, grouped up uh, plantations, and then they also have uh, taking uh, what uh, animal fostering, taking care of animals, and then pemasaran yang baik to to teach people how to effectively um, sell their products etc. 
So what is the and then okay, okay number three is peranan agensi kerajaan. So there are some agencies that help to uh, um, develop this uh, this country to to help with DB. So there are four main examples. Number one is LKM LKIM or for fish to um kemajuan ikan Malaysia. So that one is to increase the quality of life of fishermen and to make the fishing industry more modernized to make it more um um be- be- more better for society. So that's LKIM. Number two is LPP lembaga per <coughs> lembaga pertubuhan peladang. So this is to help um these uh what are this is to help uh farmers like farmers of like small of small planting areas or maybe people paddy farmers no 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 that one, that one is, that one is uh, LPN um, to help farmers in general with um, how to um, Kegiatan Koperasi means how to promote their business yeah how, how to how to promote their business and how to gain more income from it and then uh, number three is LPN or now known as Bernas Bernas National so Bernas is to control the paddy sector to make sure that the price of of um rice and paddy does not uh fluctuate too much does not like go up and go down uh, instead it will just um remain at its normal price and then uh, lastly is Risda so Risda is for the ewara eh, penyelidikan is analysis ah no no uh for the um uh, in for the investigation and for the replantation of of rubber trees, so this dies for geta. Burners is for for um rice and paddy. Uh, LPP is for farmers and L L K I M is for fishermen. And then they also have Felda, lembaga kemajuan tanah bersekutuan. So it's another agency, um, but they are mainly for the opening of land to to pro to uh, develop land. So um. Their main function is to open this land to make to uh, to help with uh, farming and then uh, they they help the, they make these people from rural areas uh, they invite them to like come to Felda and do their work there instead so that they have like stable income they have their own place to work they have their own place to live so so Felda is to help them with those stuff and then uh, <clears throat> and then they are given um tanas los pulu ekas they they're given like these um Ten acre land, uh, ten acre lands, ten acre is like quite big, oh. it's quite big. So um, this this land is to be used to um for plantation mainly getah and kelapa sawit. So for that is mainly for for it's like it's like protected land for uh, people who cannot afford to um do stuff at their own place to come to Felda and then do the stuff there instead. So that like, so they are given land to grow rubber. To grow a uh, palm oil, rubber sawit, and they also have their own place to live, and um, they also and um, they are not just like stuck there with like a house and like a land only. They have like other um things so that they can survive like a normal, uh, a normal town or normal city, like um hospitals, not uh clinics, schools. Yeah, to make the quality of life better, and then um Felda also works together with like other states, uh, and that includes Sabah, and Sarawak. For Yasa Sabah, they um they made Felda Wilayah Sahabat and Felda Umas, which are both for Kelapa Sawit, and um Sar- and they uh, work together with Sarawak to form Salkra, which is like Sarawak Felda for Sla- for Kelapa Sawit in Sarawak, and then uh, Felda is mainly for Bumi Putra, but it's also Felda for other states, eh, for other states, for other races like Felda Luar Bilut, Lurah Bilut, Felda Kelutong. Ekeratong and Felda Sendayan. So Lurah, Lurah Bilut and Ketatong is Keratong is in Pahang, while Sendayan is in N9. Um, I call Negeri Sembilan N9 by the way. And then um, uh, Pembangunan Wilayah is the fifth one. It's the fifth thing that is done in this DB. These are all things that have been done in DB. And the fifth one is to develop more regions. Um, so the um, not only Felda is opening land, there are other stuff opening land uh, for Geta and Kelapa Sawit through Kejora, Ketengah, Darang, Kesedar. You don't have to know the names, like the specific names, you just have to know the types. I mean, like their abbreviations. So Kejora, Ketengah, Darang, Kesedar are, um, are, are, are 
these agencies to open land for more rubber and uh, pulp oil plantation. And then the um, UDA or Urban Development Authority thought that uh, it is to um, develop cities like new cities such as uh, Bandar Tun Husain On which is in Cheras in Kuala Lumpur. And then uh, number six is Pemilikan Model Saham. So um, uh, equity, uh, wait, equity uh, model shares. So basically investment in stocks, shares. Um, the Bumi, back then, the Bumi Putra did not really invest in shares. So they are quite far behind. So to, to take, to, to, um, to, to stop this from, from, to stop them from falling behind further, they made these, <coughs> they made these like, um, these companies, these corporations, just for Bumi Putra. So first of all, they made a, a Masyarakat Perdagangan dan Perindustrian Bumi Putra or MPPB. So MPPB is done through Pemodelan Nasional Bahad, I think it was called. So P so that's called PNB. So MPPB is to promote this um is to promote this um investment in uh shares among Bumi Putra. And then um next is they want to um make people make of this Bumi Putra invest in shares. So they commit ASN and ASB, which is to uh, make it easier for Bumi Putra to invest. Because back then it's like quite hard because you have to go to like places in the city to invest. So ASN and ASB makes it easier for like people who can't access these investments to accept, to invest better, to invest more. Who like need to go to like go to like other places. Like if it uh, back then it was quite hard to invest if uh if you are orang traditional, uh not traditional orang Bumi Putra. So this AS and ASB is to ease that to make it easier. But we know that some Bumi Putra are also quite and uh, some non Bumis are also struggling with shares. So they have ASM Amana Saha Malaysia um for for them, specifically for them. Next is the IKS, Mengenalan Industri Kelas Sederhana. So it's like we know that there's like big corporations like MACD, KFC, Burger King, those things are like very big, right? But um, we don't have the money to make a lot of big companies like that. So instead of have, um, of making more of these big corporations, they want to promote more, um, uh, more smaller, more sm uh, small scale uh, corporations, more small scale companies uh, that are mainly, mainly focused on like their own area or their own country if they get successful enough. So yeah, uh, this is for people that do not have enough uh, employees uh, to work uh, because they have a small comp uh, they are a small company, right? So, um, um, basically, uh, they, they try and promote these IKS more. They try to promote people to do more IKS. So, uh, they, they, they make people to make their own businesses. Like, for example, they make their own food business, they make their own plant business, they make their own um, uh, clothing line. So there are a few successful ones. And I'm sure that most of you don't actually know some of these, but I'm sure a lot of you know what Romley is. Romley is really successful. Like, you know that burger patty, can? It's like, uh, if you go to a lot of stores, you will see that burger patty is coming from Romley because Romley has a lot of good burgers. So, um, yeah. Out of these ones, Romley is the most famous. But it's also other stuff like Best Farm and Faiza. Um, these are all local businesses and they all started as IKS but now they're very successful in the country. And, um, la and then lastly, the last thing that they did in DEB is to improve the education system so that they can prepare more students for the workforce, to prepare more people to do like certain professions. So um, they give basics on, um, on Kemahiran Hidup. Because back before we got RBT, now we got RBT, right? But back then they, they have KH or Kamahiran Hidup, where they like learn how to do like certain uh, processes like uh, like um, how to cook, how to knit, how to build stuff out of wood. Basically what RBT does now, but KH is more, uh, more uh, broad, more widespread. And then, um, and after that, um, as, as we all know, the schools are now not just academic, they also have like vocational schools and technical schools. And then um, after, and, but then the, the problem is back then they only had like high schools, sekolah menengah for this. So they made more maktab or universities or colleges just for these people. Like maktab perguan teknik, 
UTM and UITM. These are for like uh, more experimental stuff, more science, more sciency experiments instead of like writing academics. And then kursus kemahiran kita work untuk menambahkan tenaga um, kerja mahir. So it's like the same mention, the same point that was mentioned in uh, I think it was part seven. So wait, I can't move this anymore. Oh wow. Oh, I can't move it anymore. Okay, so okay, back to what I was saying. Um, they made these courses to help people to to train them to do more um obvious professional stuff because not everyone is good enough for academics. So they have these courses to develop people who are better in other stuff to be even better at those so that they can um uh, they they can prepare more for the future.